Hi everyone, welcome to Bonnie Carolee Makes Cards. Alex Siberia Design has a beautiful new release and it's all about Christmas. Today's card features poinsettia bouquet, which is a part of her vintage collection. This digital image has been faux watercolored with Arteza dual tip brush markers. Easy as pie, so let's get started. The image has been printed on Bristol Smooth cardstock. This cardstock is perfect for both ink blending and also for working with watercolor pens because it can withstand a little bit of water. I am applying Distress Oxide inks, Pumice Stone and Hickory Smoke. Pumice Stone, the lighter of the two grays, is applied along the edge of the image and even on top of it to catch all those little background pieces. I work towards the top of the card and the outside corner with hickory smoke. Both of the poinsettias on the card will be colored with three different tones of red to pink. I use a different color for each of the three layers of petals, starting with the smaller inside petals using current red, which is my darkest color. The color is applied to the base and along the veins. I'm working with a water brush pen. When I pull out the color, the water from the water brush pen is not applied over the entire petal. I simply go to the edges, working from the top, and then pull it down so I don't lose the intensity. I hope that makes sense. It's sometimes difficult to describe exactly how you do things. On to the second layer of petals and my medium red, which is rosewood. Again, the color is applied at the base and the veins and the watercolor pen is used to pull the color down. And this is when I decided to change things up. I switched out the water pen for Spectrum Noir Sparkle Glitter Brush Pen. Of all the sparkle pens, this one is my favorite. I first tapped it out on paper towels so I could control the amount of liquid that would go on the petal. So working with the glitter pen, I am coating the entire petal. In fact, I'm going back and redoing the ones that were just done in water. And I think you can catch in the video the sparkle that's being applied. I am being careful with the amount of liquid that goes onto the base of the petal and the veins because I don't want to lose that intensity. When working with the sparkle pen, I tap it onto paper towel periodically to pick up some of that excess liquid. I also keep a fairly light hand when I'm applying the sparkle over those areas where I want the shadows to remain intact. For the final layer of petals, I'm working with a color called hot pink, which is not as scary as it sounds. When working on flowers with layers of petals, I like to introduce different colors and I like to do it in layers as I have done here. Typically, I'll start as I have with this one with my darkest color in the center and then work towards the lighter one, in this case the hot pink, on the outer layer of petals. I think this tonal variation just gives it a more natural look. The second poinsettia was painted in exactly the same way. Current red is used on the candy cane and on the berries. I work on multiple berries at once, applying that color to the base of each one. Sparkle is applied to the entire berry. Minimal pressure is used on the shadow area. This will prevent the paint from moving too much and keep a contrast between it and the highlight. For the holly leaves, I'm using a combination of shamrock green and teal. The shamrock green is the deeper of the two and has been applied at the base. The teal was applied up against the edge of the green and then the sparkle brush was used to pull the teal out to create a highlight area. To finish up, I used a light hand to apply shamrock green to the needles of the evergreen. I wanted the color to be tight to the image so the sparkle pen was not used. 
The panel was trimmed down slightly smaller than A2 size before it was die cut with Simon Says Stamps A2 thin frames. This die was also used to cut a silver metallic frame. The panel and the outer frame were spattered using watered down white gouache. To keep the spatter fine, I used a number one watercolor brush. Simon Says Stamps Merry Christmas Wafer Die was used to cut silver metallic cardstock and black foam. The foam die cut has not been removed from the backing, but I am removing the centers from the letters. These will be used as registration marks to help me get the foil sentiment aligned to the foam one. A light stream of glue is applied over the foam die cut. The foil die cut is easily aligned because there is an impression in the foam where it will sit. Any small adjustments to the alignment are done with the craft pick in the cutout openings of the letters. This is set aside to dry completely before I remove the foam backing from the sentiment. The interior panel is also applied to foam. Keeping a very light pressure on the glue bottle, I run the nozzle along the outside edge of the panel. The metallic frame is adhered. Adhesive on foam can take a while to dry. I set it aside before I trim off the excess foam. The outer frame from the panel is adhered to a card base that measures five and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. And this is a good example of why I use liquid glue. I didn't get this centered. Working quickly, I lifted the frame off and was able to reposition it back onto the card base without reapplying glue. The foam-backed panel with its thin silver frame was adhered to the card base. I did sit my Misty on top for a few minutes so that there would be good contact between the foam and the card base. The foam backing is removed from the sentiment. I do have to use my craft pick in a number of areas to help release that foam. It is a little bit of work to foam mount sentiments, but if you like dimension like I do and really want those sentiments to pop off your card, it's worth it. Typically for a sentiment so fine, I would use Tombow glue and let it dry until it's tacky. But for whatever reason, and I'm not sure what that might be, I didn't. I used regular glue. So I just took the sentiment and tapped off the excess glue onto paper towel before I applied it to the card. I got some new sequins from Studio Kasha. They're almost multifaceted, so they catch the color beautifully, called Silver Fever, and I'm applying a few of them to the card. Some small dots of Black Nouveau drops are applied to the center of the flowers. I apply just a few and space them out so that they don't run together, and when they are set, I'll come back and finish it up. To finish up this card, Crystal Nouveau Drops Morning Dew are applied to the sequins. When the morning dew is dry, it is clear and the sequins look like beautiful jewels. Poinsettia Bouquet is just one of many gorgeous images in Alex Siberia Design's newly released vintage collection. The supplies and materials used to make this card can be found in the description of my YouTube video or on my blog at bonniecarolee.com. I'll also have a link to the full release. You need to check it out. It is just gorgeous. Thank you so much for stopping by. As always, I appreciate your visit.